getting ready. Hello, We're everyone. Get on to me. This is Ro. This is Christy. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Random Thoughts. Episode, I think we said it was episode 60, I right? Have the slightest idea. So, we haven't been here in what a couple of weeks two weeks going on three uh, weeks yeah it's been a minute kind of lost not lost track so i'm looking up what episode we're on because yeah. i haven't listened yeah that, it's episode 60 episode 60 yeah yeah so uh we're back we're here hanging out at the park with lucille with the air on with the top up and the top up no the top down top, and the air top on. is on air is on so if y'all hear that yeah. in the background i don't care yeah so if you hear that in the background that's lucille humming because, because it is it's keeping us cool right burning now. gas this is gonna burning cost gas. you it's like gonna 50 dollars it's gonna be 50 bucks for for gas for uh, although for this cool. oh well that's because i don't have it on yeah. follow me let's see i had my weather app on gulf shores instead of oh it that's says, right it says 89 feels like 94 at the golf shores no, that's here. Yeah. I had to switch it. I was trying to see. What What's the golf happened. shores? Because you got golf shores gotta... says eighty three feels like ninety. Whew! I thought you were supposed to go to the beach to cool down. You don't go to the beach to cool down. You have the ocean to cool off in. Ah, uh-huh. well, no. See, I, that's I don't know because okay, so it's different here because you know when I was in Arizona, um, there's something wrong with my mic. I can hear can you. Can you hear? Fine. Can you hear me like like in an echo? Or is it just me? I don't hear an echo. Okay, it's probably just my headphones then. So, um, anyway, so you know, so when we were in Arizona in the summer, it was like a hundred plus, right? And we would go when we went but to the beach. It's a dry heat. Yeah, it's a dry heat. I went to Arizona once so as a child. So when we would go to the beach, it was San Diego. It was only you know two and a half three hours away, and if it was one hundred and fifteen in Yuma when we hit San Diego, when we hit the beach, it was seventy five. 76. I don't want to be at the beach when it's 75. So, That's the only acceptable time for it to be flaming hot is when you're at the beach. No, no, I don't. I because disagree. you have the ocean breeze, you no, have the it's sound, still hot. you get hot, it's you still go hot. dip in the no. ocean, you go back to your no. chair and back to your book, no. and you get you dry no. off, you get hot, and no. you go back in. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. When you go to the beach, when, at least in my version, when I went to the beach, it was to be cool, regardless of whether you were in the water. But you had that like clean no, water. No water damn thing that you well, got in where they treated about, the, with the medicine in the water you could go there to cool off <laughs> well yeah but when you get out of the water it was hot right yeah but yeah. you know at the beach over there it was it was cool whether you were at you know in the water or not i don't know Plus, it just seems you know me i'm not a fan of salt water right yeah i mean i'm not gonna swim in the ocean i'm gonna dip in it and i'm gonna get so, out i'm gonna dip and out so that's the kind of beach i'm i'm, I'm used to where i would go in the, i would go there to cool off it was in the 70s you know, yeah. 80 How at far the was most. San Diego from you guys? About two and a half, three hours. Oh, all right. right. So, so that was that's what I was used to. When I first went to the beach here, I was like, oh yeah, let's go to the beach. So we went to Panama City. Panama uh, City. Panama City, right? And we went to the beach, and we're like, what the hell? It's hotter than balls. What is going on? This is well, not California. Is, is you, you know, know, this is not what I was expecting. Yeah, it, it, it was the, the water was blue. The the site the, the, the Pacific the Ocean was white, versus the Gulf. Uh, you know, but it was hotter Closer than hell. Closer to the equator. And then and then there was no palm trees. I was like, what? Come oh, on. it's my favorite part of going south, more south, is when you start to see the palm trees. So yeah, I'm going to the beach, uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend. Yeah, so so you got your your beach vacation planned. This and then, weekend, and I then have you go back to Ohio too, right? Michigan, yeah. Michigan. Not looking as forward to that trip as this one, but it'll be all right. Yeah, you're not going to Michigan in the winter. Like no. the song, Michigan no. in the winter. It's gonna feel like. Ever heard that song, the Michigan last in the winter? Time, I have not. No. The last time we were in Michigan was about this time of year. We usually go, like if we go, we usually go around the 4th because my uncle, it's his favorite holiday, but we can't make it work on the 4th this year. Um, and we haven't been in, I don't know, five or six years. Um, but it'll be like high in the 70s. Yeah, like It'll that's be like nice. high, like 72, 73. Like yeah. We'll be in hoodies Yeah. because we're going to leave. You know, it's June um, and it's already like heat index of 97 down here, yeah. which is miserable. I don't know why I live in the South. Um, but For I love. do. No, well, not anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, 
Originally it was anyway, well, no, originally, originally it, was it was running from love. Running from love. You know, yeah. I never heard that story. Do you want? You don't want to hear that story. I never heard today. that story. But anyways, if so, you don't want to tell it, that's I mean, fine. I don't care to tell that story. So I don't think it's very interesting. So in finish, college, finish, finish your Michigan story. Oh, anyway, we'll be in hoodies, and they'll be all like, "Oh my god, it's so hot! We all want to go to the lake." And I'll be mm -hmm. like, "Y'all are crazy! I'm gonna be in my hoodies and have a fire going." So yeah. But so, I'm a little excited about the trip because I'm not staying at my mom's. Yeah. My mom's house is crowded. You got a cabin, right? And I don't want to spend a bunch of money because it's expensive. Like right now, everything is expensive. Yeah. And it's really expensive to get there. And I'm not going to spend a bunch of money to sit on somebody else's couch and watch them watch TV. So we not, are... You're not the people watching? We got a... Uh, no. So we got a cabin on the lake. And it's got a nice fire pit. And walk to the lake and you know the boys are going to sleep till like noon anyway so I'll be able to go out and just chill by the lake and read a book and feel like I'm on vacation we're gonna I bought tickets to tour Lambeau Field cool uh because Green Bay is about two hours from there and my my go get some cheese Wisconsin my, cheese my eldest you have to have some Wisconsin cheese uh, maybe um, well, the plan is we're going to go. We got an early tour. It's like an hour and a half tour. Uh, my eldest is a ginormous Packers fan and an Aaron Rodgers uh, fanatic. Okay. Um, so, and we toured Lambo when he was little, but he wasn't like the Packers fan that he is now. So I'm hoping he'll enjoy this as much as I spent on it. Yeah. Um, but my cousin and her husband are going with us. So we're going to drive to Green Bay and then we're going to find some place cool to eat. Green Bay is like a really small town. Yeah. Um, like it's smaller than it's probably like Scottsboro. Like it's a really small town. Um, so, but anyway, so we'll, why we'll is that? Do, I don't know. Did they say okay? It's kind of like Tuscaloosa. The town, the like town if you, can't go, grow this you think Tuscaloosa bigger? being the home of so how do they feel the stadium? The University of Most Alabama. People from outside they, of Green yeah. Bay? So, but like you think like Tuscaloosa, where out, where University of Alabama is, is huge, crazy, busy yeah. town. Well, I worked a for a company. Town. I yeah. worked for a company that we had a plant down there, and I went down there, and the town is like small and yeah. dead when there's when school's not in yeah. session like it yeah. like doubles its size and population when school's in i think yeah. so that's but anyway so that'll be fun and then we come back and then we spend a couple days in nashville because evans beta club convention is starts the sunday we get back and then back to work and then jay goes to his beta club convention okay. a few days after we get home so it's a it's a lot it's probably not the best timing but it's how it worked out and we really don't need to take two vacations in a month. Why not? Um, what the hell, right? Well, I mean, it's just, you know, when I planned these, things weren't as expensive as they yeah. are. And, no. You'll be uh, driving? Yeah, situations were a little bit different. So, you know, it's all a little topsy-turvy, but it'll be fine. Yeah. We'll work it out. There's a reason I did not spend my tax return. Yeah. <laughs> You should have your fast car back, right? Uh, no, I will not. not. What? No. So, yeah, update. Still don't have my car back. Um, my what? phone's ringing. So, what, what is the uh, ETA on that? Another two um, weeks, two weeks? So, they're telling me I won't have it back for the beach trip. I should have it back for Michigan, but we're okay. flying to Michigan. Um, okay. So, I don't know. It keeps becoming a parts issue. When they gave me the, you know, preliminary quote... Um, you know, they couldn't get in, like, they didn't take it apart to see what all they were going to need. So they just keep coming up with, you know, oh, yeah. we need, you know, we got to get these parts. We need to do this. And, yeah. You know, what they had to order. And of course, they're, you know, everybody's having a hard time with part shortages and stuff like that. So it's, um, so right now we're hoping middle of this month I'll get my car back. Yeah. I had to argue with the trucking company a little bit about my rental, but we got that figured out. And now I'm just basically told I have until I get my car back. Which is good. So don't tell them, look, dude, I didn't hit you. You hit me. So the next, the next struggle will be getting here to get my car because you know it's thirty minutes from where I live, yeah. and getting the rental back <laughs> because I can't ride two horses with one ass, as they say. So I'm gonna have to, you know. And Jay's working, so we'll have to figure out how I'm gonna have return all these things. No, I have no. not. I'm scared so of horses. You never know, right? Yeah. So anyway, I don't know if you want me to tell the story about how I ended up in Alabama. So, so it's not really yeah. relevant to any yeah so so up to date so topic. We I didn't can know, save it for another day. I didn't know you had a runaway bride story. I mean, well, runaway fiance. Runaway fiance. So in college, I dated the same guy mostly through college, and now um, this the fraternity guy, the frat yeah, guy. Yeah. And um, anyway, you know, we got to this point. We're graduating. We both were in the same program, same degree, and it was kind of like, what are we going to do after college? 
Um, I was planning on staying in my college town. I was working for a company, and you know, I had a job. I didn't apply yeah. for jobs because I had a job. They were going to hire me. I worked for them my entire senior year as an intern. And they were going to hire me. Um, and then, like two weeks before graduation, they said, "Oh, we're shutting down this this branch, and we're freezing all hires." So there I was, this college senior, about to graduate, and I had no feelers out there. So my boyfriend who had a job back in his hometown, which was about four people and 30 minutes from the nearest Walmart, um, thought it was a good idea to propose. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I mean, and I was like, okay, well, you have a job, and let's get married. You know, it was kind of like, what do you do? You, you either yeah. break up or you kind of decide what you're going to do. And yeah. we'd never really talked about life outside of college. <laughs> um, so, anyway, so, you know, he had a job, he had an apartment, and I went with him. We were engaged. Graduation, my mother cried the whole time. It was awful. Um, it, it, in hindsight, it was never going to work out. But, you know, when you're 22 and you think yeah. life is full of roses. Yeah. So, anyway, the I moved world to... world is in your hand, Yeah, right? I moved to this itty-bitty little town in Ohio, and I kept applying and, and interviewing for jobs, and there just weren't any in the area, like, because it was such a small yeah. rural area. There weren't a lot of industries, and it wasn't a whole lot of... The two of us with the same degree were going to be able to find successfully yeah. in the same area. So one yeah. of us was going to have to travel. I wasn't really keen on traveling a whole lot at the time. And none of the jobs were really anything I wanted. And then we kind of figured out, like, living together is hard. And I don't want to live here. And, like, I thought this was the plan. And, like, his plan was to never leave hometown. And it was like all these It was like, hmm, these are probably things we should have talked about. Yeah. So one day, I... Uh, set my ring. I called my dad and I was like, Daddy, um, first I made a trip to see my best friend. I was like, I'm coming to see you because I got to work through some stuff. So I went there and then I came back and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do this. So I cowardly left my ring on the table and called my dad and I said, I need you to come get me. <laughs> And like every daddy, every daddy's girl yeah. should, yeah. he said, I'll be there in the morning. So I drove to my grandmother's house and my dad came and got me. We drove to Alabama yeah. and that's how I got to Alabama. You didn't even leave a note? Yeah, I left a note. You left a note? It was cowardly. It was yeah. awful. Did and he call you and say, hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah. He actually followed me down here. Um, and he got, a, he actually was interviewing for jobs down here. And this was, it was several months after I yeah. came down here and I started working it when it was Carrie's time. Um, you know, it was the grand romantic gesture everybody wants. Um, and he came to visit. And we had a nice visit, but yeah. it was like, this is just, this is not, you know, like I think we both kind of realized this is this is not going to yeah. work, you know. Like you have these great idea, you know, this big ideal of what everything's going to be. And, and so we, uh, he did not take the job he was offered. I mean, he was, I mean, he was going to move down here. It was all going to work out. And I was just like, yeah, well, I don't know if that's a good idea, yeah. you know? Or so, you, yeah. so anyway, uh, and very short, actually, I think I had already met my now ex-husband by then. And it was kind of like, I don't really know where this is going. Um, I'm going to need a minute. Cause this dude just showed up. <laughs> we got some stuff we need to talk about. Um, but Kinda yeah, like that, so, uh, so when you were at the dorm and your old in college and your old boyfriend right? showed up, yeah, I was like, wait a minute, yeah, yeah. So you know, I always seem to be the one that got away, but not worth sticking around for. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, so I mean, we parted ways. It was, I mean, I'm not gonna say it wasn't emotional, but it was fun. And I actually, every couple of years, we still find each other somewhere through LinkedIn or whatever, and have about a half an hour conversation. He's married. She's a teacher. They got married at Disney, which I don't know why that blows my mind. Um, he has a little girl who I imagine is probably a, not uh, so little anymore. She wanted a princess wedding, I guess. And uh, and he's a he's her softball coach. He's still working for the same company. It seems like everything worked out the way it's supposed to. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's how I ended up in Alabama. Girl. I was well, hey man, you know. But it worked out, right? Story of my life. <laughs> Story of my life. So, but anyway, yeah, that's how I ended up in Alabama. Yeah. Well, and here you are, right, podcasting. <laughs> Well, my plan was like two years and out. Like, I'm going to be here two years. I'm going to build my resume. And I had always thought I would go back to Ohio. Ohio. Um, and then I met, you know, I met baby daddy. And now I'm still here. Now so, you're still here. Now I'm still here. Not yeah. not married uh, or, or otherwise engaged or dating. Um, and, yeah. 
So here you. Do you still plan on making your way back to Ohio at some point? Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I always said that, you know, I went with the boys while they're in high school, and I've been starting high school, so my I now am the mother of two high schoolers. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a rough year for me, so because Jay's going to graduate and Evan's going to start high school, and that's a lot for my, you know, my my poor, very dependent on my children heart. Um. You know, I always said once, like Evans and you know whatever Evan decides to do, if he goes to college, if he does whatever he wants to do, that that would be my turn to like then I could, I wouldn't have to stay here. You know, yeah. I always I stayed here and I promised them I would stay here as long as I could. I would never move them from their dad if I didn't have to. You know, I mean obviously sometimes like yeah. if I were unemployed or didn't, you know then I would be in trouble. But yeah. um, so you know, four years, who knows? Yeah. So if, if there was so if you had your choice to go somewhere, where would you go? I don't know. I mean, I don't really have any, like, I don't have family in Ohio anymore. There's nowhere um, that you say, hey, I'd like to live there for a while just to see what I it's love like. Ohio. When I go back to Ohio, it feels like home, but I don't know where I would go in Ohio because I don't really have any people in Ohio. Um, and I, I don't think I, yeah, but they all live like in, in Columbus, which is okay. a really big city, which has never been my comfort zone. I'm always probably going to be a bit of a small town girl. I think like Huntsville or Chattanooga might be like yeah. the biggest I would get. Um, I don't think I ever want to be in like a big traffic monster New York City or <laughs> yeah. um Chicago. so I don't know I think probably what I would be more open to in four or five years is you know I've been offered a lot of like division or district jobs where I would be you know traveling most of the time um so you know maybe I would take a job like that you know and then you know kind of figure yeah. it all out but so I realized something this week. The people are, look they're all, look they've already turned us off because of my my voice. Um, my friend Julie <laughs> was talking to her this weekend. I was trying to get her to join me at the beach, yeah. um, and she's like, "Oh, I've got my friend. We're celebrating her fiftieth birthday." And I was like, "Don't take this the wrong way." And I was like, 50? Who are you hanging out? Why are you hanging out with fifty year olds? Why? I mean, what kind of party is that? Yeah, and she goes, "I was like, you're hanging out with these old people." She goes, uh, we are the old people. And I was like, damn, you're right. That is, that's my age I am, I'm a, I am the old people. Yeah. So. So there you, here you are hanging out yeah. with the 50-year-old. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, but for me, I don't know. I guess in my brain, I'm, not, I'm just not in that age. But you know what? I, it's interesting that you say that because in my brain, I don't feel yeah. like old people. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a really hard right, time with like, 45 like this year. I posted that meme about Maverick being the ger geriatric version of. Did you see it? Top Gun. I'm like, wait a minute, I am the geriatric. <laughs> Did you go see it? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. What? We went and saw it. I haven't seen it. I wanted to go this weekend, but I didn't get to go out because I, you know, I I was dog sitting all weekend. So dog sitting, they're your dogs. Yeah, dog sitting. You leave them during the day. You could have left them for a movie. Uh, yeah, I guess. But. Listen, some people and their dogs, they but, kind of uh, blow my mind. So, honestly, here, here's why I, I didn't go, all right? Because I wanted to go watch it at the uh, movie theater where you can drink beer. Yeah. Alcohol. And they were temporarily closed. I don't know why they were temporarily closed, but they, they weren't open. I don't that, know. So. The theater we were in was packed. Yeah was packed so it was very busy and it was like random middle but like not late not the late night like people go on date yeah. movies and not like afternoon like people hit the matinees yeah. it was like the six o'clock movie yeah which i thought that'll be a good time to go to the movies because it'll be like most people if they're like going out on dates and stuff they'll be at dinner it was packed well, maybe we we'll go to the movies first and then dinner i don't know or, that's or where we are old dinner. because we don't go to dinner early bird special i'm not and eating then after 8 p.m yeah i'm not eating after 8 p.m that's for, you know. that's, I'm too old for that. That yeah. keep me, you know. Yeah, I get heartburn. I get heartburn, man, and I won't go to sleep. I've never had heartburn. No, never. That's the no. You're lucky. I've never had heartburn. And people talk about it, and I'm like, I don't know what that feels like. No, not even when you were pregnant. Most women no. get heartburn when they're pregnant. You didn't get heartburn when you were pregnant. No, I was one of those um, pregnant folks that everybody hates because I loved everything about being pregnant. The only bad thing I had, I mean, like my feet swelled really bad with Jay, but it didn't really bother you me get that much. Aches? Mm -mm. No, I mean, I mean, like I felt like my hips were breaking for a, a portion of time. But the only bad thing for me was when, you know, was delivering Evan because it was so scary. But otherwise, I, I, I honestly, if I didn't get so attached to the little person, you know, because, you know, like yeah. when they put Jay in my arms, I looked at him and I said, hey, little man, which is what I always called him in my belly, you know, because I said, yeah. you know, 
and he looked right up at me like he knew me. Right. So I think I would make a great surrogate before I was, you know, too old yeah. for babies. Um, because I really liked being pregnant. That's so interesting. I, it was the coolest thing I ever did. Yeah. But um, and you did it twice. But I don't want to. Uh, I don't, you know. But to hand it over to someone would be hard. Yeah. Yeah. But that now, but now there are days with teenagers. I'm yeah, like, like, I can I hand you over right, right now. now. <laughs> Call your dad. Have him come pick you so, up. So yeah, I could hand you over for a while. For a while. So, which is what's nice about my upcoming vacation because no kids, they're not going. Oh, there you go, single mom vacation. So it's gonna be a party. Yeah, no, it's not. It's gonna be quiet. It's gonna be. <laughs> You're not going by yourself, are you? No, no. I told my friend who's going with me. I was like, listen, this is how it's gonna work. I get up really early. She does too. And uh, I was like, I get up really early. I'm gonna get up. I might go work out. And then I'm going to the beach. You're I'm not running on the beach. Uh, no, I'm not. Beach, I'm no. not running. You're running beach five k. Running on the beach sounds awful. That sounds really hard. Yeah. Um. But yoga. On and the then beach. that I would do. Um. So ooh, that'd be fun if I could beach find like yoga. a beach yoga class. Yeah. Um. And then I'm going to stay on the beach all day. I'm going to load up my Kindle. I'm going to load up my cooler. And then when I get hungry, we'll shower, get dressed, and we'll go out to go eat. eat one yeah. at dinner, and that will be. That's mm. I, I, no bar I get, hopping. No, I only get out. two full days oh. of vacation. You don't so. want to run away being hung over the next day, right? I mean, maybe I'd actually sleep in if I was hung over, but I, um, yeah, like I just want, I just want, I just want to relax for a couple days. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So I'm probably not. I am. I, I mean, I've never been the party girl. No. Not even, come on, in college you know you're a party I mean, in college I went to parties, but I was, I was, you know, one or two times I was the rowdy drunk person, but it wasn't like I was the rowdy dance on the tables drunk person. I was like the had too much to drink and throwing up outside person. Like, I've okay. never been like... Oh, you weren't the rowdy kind? No. Dancing on the tables no. and all that other fun stuff? No. No? No. No? Okay. I've been pretty boring my entire life. You think so? I know. And now I here know, I am. Because you tell some pretty... Adventurous stories, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. I think they just surprise people. They just it's surprise not that I'm people. not fun. I'm just not that wild. Okay, you're fun. So in a non-wild kind of way. I'm fun in a boring safety lady kind of way. Okay. So my friend I can't Summer. Picture that, but okay. I put a. I put a. It's like an oxymoron. Fun in a kind of safety. I'm fun in a safe lady, way. In a safe way. My uh, my friend Summer, who religiously listens to our podcast, I put a yeah. picture. I put a random thoughts podcast for my snap streaks. Because, yes, I'm 45 and I have snap streaks. And what my snap streaks are typically... How many, are, how many snap streaks? Do you, well, I think I have six right now. What's your length right now? Uh, my longest? longest streak, I am both proud and ashamed to say, is 1,016 days. Wow. Um, I but, don't have any snap streaks. But anyway... I don't even know what they are. Summer said shout out. So, shout out. Summer. Shout out to Summer. Um, shout out to Summer. She's she's the one going with you on vacation? No, she's oh. not. Uh, who's going on vacation with you? My friend Nicole is going on vacation. Does she listen to the podcast? No. I don't know yeah. if she does or not. She might. Nicole, if you're listening, you know, you got to get uh, Christy out there and uh, make sure she has some fun in, a, fun in an unsafe way. <laughs> the, so we had a we had a Well, moment. scratch was, that. We want to make sure she's safe. I was looking up where we were staying, and I was like, hey, here's where we're staying, and there's this big pink building next to it, yeah. and it's called, they're like, it's within walking distance of the Pink Pony Cafe, and the I was like, oh, cafe? shit. Yeah. And I was like, we need to look up what this is because the Pink Pony in our neck of the woods yeah. is a strip club. Yeah. And I said to Nicole, I said, oh my God, if we're in a hotel, because I'm terrible at planning trips, Maybe it's a I am bad at club. it. No, it's like a it's like a lunch seafood cafe, seafood restaurant. Because I looked it up because I was like, I said, number one, I'm mortified if we're staying next to a strip club. But number two, I've never been to one and we're going. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, I'm not going to a strip club. I was like, I want to go. Nobody will take me to one. I just want to see what it's like inside. What's it like? I've been. I'll be that girl that like makes friends with the dancers yeah, and you know probably right. share recipes. Share I don't some know. safety tips when they're on the pole. I'll or be say, like, hey, girl, I hope you're stretching the... those ankles yeah, because when, those you know. heels. That's you're just yeah. asking for yeah, trouble. Sliding off that pole head first is not a good idea, girl. I'll be talking about you know how we how we clean it when yeah. we're done. I'll be talking about you know like good ergonomic stretching yeah. exercises yeah. and you know making sure we got a strong core so that we. Yeah. You know, are less likely to have injury. Yeah, we don't want you yeah. to sprain your ankle or something. Listen, some of those shoes 
I'm just guessing. I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I bet. I, I'm just, I bet. You know, off the top. I don't know, but if it turns out that it's not a seafood restaurant and it's a strip <laughs> club, I will come back with a story that said I went. All right, Nicole. If you're listening, make sure Christy comes back with a story. I don't. Th it's according to the internet, it is a restaurant. Well, I mean, it could be a and not a gentleman's club. Maybe they have like a one of those uh, like a back door speakeasy we can speak in. type oh, of thing. Yeah. Where, there you, you go. Know, Maybe you should Google and see if they have a speakeasy down there somewhere. No. No? No. You don't know what a speakeasy? There's Listen, nothing wrong with the speakeasy. I'm probably going to day drink, and by the time I get to the restaurant... You like jazz music? I don't want to know. No? I mean, I don't hate it, but that's not what I want to do. I don't, no. I don't know. We'll see. Have I'm not been, the only one going ever, on the trip, so... Have you ever been to speakeasy? I have. Um, Didn't enjoy I have. it? I mean, it wasn't awful, but it's not something I would probably seek out. Kind of like escape rooms. Like, I've been to one... I we broke out whatever, but it's not my thing. Have you been to the Speakeasy in Huntsville? Mm -hmm. The one behind the lockers. Mm -hmm. Okay, but see that's that's a made up Speakeasy, right? You yeah, need to go still. to you need to go to a real one. Yeah, I went to one. That, I need to go to the uh, beach is where I need to go, and I'm going in to, eight days. Yeah, I went to one in uh, Kansas City. I went to a job site, and then at the hotel we were staying. It was an old hotel in downtown. It was one of the oldest hotels in, in the downtown area. And the lady kept saying, hey, yeah, you know, if you ever want to come down to our speakeasy, you know, we have, it's right behind this, these shelves and this and that. And I, always, I thought she was pulling my leg because I could I could see. And I was like, there's, there's no nothing door back there. there. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, and then so we went out for dinner one time. And I mean, it was like thousands of people out there. And it was like women. Everyone was like, why is there so many women out here? And we're walking down, you know, downtown and trying to find a place to eat. Were they and hookers? No. And we're like, everywhere you looked, there was women. I was like, why is there so many women out here? Everywhere we wanted to go eat was packed. Even the McDonald's was packed. So finally, we, we went to a place and we sat down. There's a, we said, well, what's the wait time? They're like, oh, about, about an hour. And they had an outdoor patio out front. And I said, okay, well, I said, this is the... One with the least wait wait time, so we said, okay, we'll we'll sit outside and drink some drinks and and you know until until you can you know, open table comes up and you know we're sitting outside and there's women walking by and just headed towards and we're like where the hell are they going? And I was like, okay, we gotta Google what the hell's going on. Well, we googled it and so we were like uh, about three blocks away from like it was either a stadium or an arena. I can't remember what it was. Oh, and there's some women's conference. Or... And there was a Justin Timberlake concert. Ah, yes. And we're like, oh, okay, now Did we you know not see a bunch of like concert t-shirts and stuff? No, no, it was just women dressed up, you know, full, you know, like full blown out, dressed up like they were going out for a date or something. Oh, well, yeah, right? I mean, if you can hook Justin they're, Timberlake. They're, yeah, they were trying to hook Justin Timberlake, and that's what it was. It was a Justin Timberlake concert. Uh, so, but anyway, so we had dinner, went back. Justin can bring the ladies now. You know, and it was about eight or nine. And uh, the girl said, so so you ready for the speakeasy? And I'm like, uh, I was like, okay. You know, I was like, all right. So, and she's like, so you're you're a guest here, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm a guest. And she's like, all right, well, let me call oh, someone. it was in so. the hotel. Yeah, she okay. said, it was at the at the reception desk. Right, and she's like, all right, let me call so and so. I can't remember her name is, so she called her, and I was like, okay. You gotta like get your name on the list with they, the bouncer. They're pulling my legs. So apparently, there's only one. There's a specific girl that has to come and escort she, you. Yeah, she escorts you. So she comes. Yeah, hey, that's man. not a she's speakeasy like, role. She's like, hey, Mr. Ariano, so you you want to go down to the speakeasy? It's like, yeah. So are you staying? That's like, easy, but not speakeasy. Yeah, and, she's <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. She's like, well, what room number? So I gave her my number. So like, oh, right. my God. You gave your room number to strangers. Yeah. And she's well, they were uh, hotel employees. I'm yeah, sure. They just whatever. wanted to make sure that I was staying there. I listened to too many crime and, podcasts. I was not somebody off the street, right? So I was like, all right. So she's like, all right, follow me. So she starts walking towards the wall. I'm like, where the hell are we going? So all of a sudden, she does something and, you know, the shelf pops out. And the madam comes out. And then there's and a door. She what kind of, what yeah. kind of uh, treat you prefer tonight. I don't know. <laughs> And then there was a door, and then she's like, all right. She's like, you know, and she didn't even walk me down there. She's like, all right, walk down these stairs. Yeah, but you know. You're, you're going to see, there's going to be a great door. She's like, just go. You, you Brunettes know. on the left, redheads yeah. on the she's right, She's like, you know, straight ahead. Once you open that door, she's like, you're in the, in the, in the, yeah. in the speakeasy. So I'm walking down these steps, and it's like, like so industrial, right? It's like, 
it's not like fancy stairs or it's just cement stairs and, and brick, you know, brick walls. Yeah, like I would have been like, I'm turning around. Like if it was an emergency exit, right? The stairs, so I'm like, okay, where the hell am I going? Yeah. I'm but here's that. the thing. So then I come up to this great door and there's like a little window and it's like an industrial metal door, right? And I'm like, what the hell? I push it. You walk in, dude, it's like walking, women everywhere. It was like walking into a bar in the, you good in the 1930s or 40s. Yeah. It was yeah, that, that was that, that was yeah. that. Well, see, this was actually an original speakeasy. This is the one that was made up. What do they call as them? A, brothels. Well, that's maybe what they called them back then, but this was the actual the original. No, that's where you were. Yeah. You were at a brothel. So you walk in there and it was the original. I mean, it was just like walking, from the 1800s. Yeah, like walking back in. It's like going back in time. Yeah. You know, the, the, the ambiance, the, the lighting, the furniture, the bar. I mean, it was it was nice in there. And then up, up, up you know, towards the end, there was like a little jazz band. Yeah. You know, there were some guys playing jazz and then they had couches to sit around and tables. And, you know, there were some people there dancing to the jazz music. I mean, it was, it was, it was an experience for me because, you know, it was, it was, My phone it was keeps totally going different. Off, I'm sorry. Yeah. It was totally, you know, different for me i'd never yeah, been into, yeah. in that kind of ambiance you know i was used to go to clubs ambience. it's like boom boom boom, boom, boom. people dancing on the speakers and, i don't think it was a speakeasy or 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 either it was as a brothel where i was at boys town or they called it happy endings happy endings <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh anyway but yeah i mean that that that's what i, I remember from the that speakeasy so i've never been to the one in huntsville so I really don't know what it's like in there. It sounds similar, but no hookers. No hookers? No. Well, that's not my it's kind not of place. not a brothel. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. But, yeah, anyway, so. I didn't have to give anybody my personal information to go in. Yeah. So, I There's mean. There's no I, background I, check connected, yeah, no. con conducted to make sure yeah, that I wasn't so, a cop. I don't know if they get a lot of people that off the street that want to go in not there. Not many women lot, in there. So. They weren't inviting women into the speakeasy, just the men. There yeah. was a few women there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was all hotel guests that would, mm. you know, you know. It was interesting was because... Was there an hourly rate for the hotel? No. Mm. I, I didn't I didn't pay for it. High class. Oh. I didn't pay for it, so I'm I don't know. I'm taking this down. I'm taking so, this down. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. the, uh, uh, yeah, there was no no uh, hookers and cocaine Well, you just involved didn't involved like in your... That wasn't in your selection profile. Like in, in your uh, story that one time. <laughs> That was a, like a twelve-year-old or fourteen-year-old. Yeah, yeah, there was no fourteen-year-olds. I still wouldn't and know how to get a hooker or cocaine. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that was uh, that was interesting to me. I you know I really it was a pretty good experience. I you know I enjoyed it. So if I were in Kansas City, that's probably where I'm going to stay in that same hotel and hit the speakeasy. Um, well, there you go. Um, you but, enjoyed yeah. your you enjoyed your uh, visit there. So yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. interesting. Um, oh, I was gonna say something else. I can't remember. I don't know. You know, I, as usual, I interrupt and take us off track. Yeah, you took me off track. Yeah. Now I can't so what, was well, say. what else going on? Other than uh, been some shitty news and some yeah, bombshell yeah, news. Yeah. So some... so I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it was kind of depre. Well, I don't know if you want to call it depre depressing, but it's kind of sad with that. Uh, those uh, kids that were oh, that were shot and I killed in, I, mm. in Texas. Um, I know all the, and it was a kid who did it, which and is, it was makes a kid, it even and, more and, devastating. And, and but what, what makes it scarier is that the kid that did it grew up in this era of, uh, you know, he was only eighteen. On, on on on, he grew up with mass yeah. shooting drills. Right, so that's the scary part, and, and I think that's they say they say that's why he was able to do what he did because he knew. Well, no, the, he knew what the drill was. The emergency response. Was, he knew what was the he knew what the drill terrible. was. He knew what they were taught, where to hide. I didn't even think about that. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and and all that other stuff because, you know, that's why he was able to do it because he 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 knew he knew what was going to happen. Just, I don't know. I mean, there's. There's just, there's so much, there's so much to wrap your head around. I mean, it's, he's a kid. Yeah. Clearly, I, I mean, I can't imagine that there's not some kind of mental health issue there. Uh, you know, we, 
I think we're, we're making strides in, you know, mental health awareness and treatment and taking, you know, and, and things like that, but there's still some stigma around it. And, yeah. And there's some gun control, you know, everybody's going to politicize it. And, and that's the thing. That's, and that's what bothers you know, me is... Emergency response sounds like it was all wrong. It was awful. It was terrible. So, so And it's just... Yeah. And, and, and the bottom line is, it's tragic yeah it's tragic and and i don't know what happened i wasn't there you know i'm just, just going off of what i read but but the fact that an off-duty border patrol with his barber's Bar shotgun yeah, his, is the shotgun one that took in. down the shooter after the cops sat outside for over 40 minutes 45 minutes right listening. so oh gosh yeah and, and and here's what's even worse is 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 you know there were some cops that got there actually went inside grabbed their kids uh, yeah, came back outside and then stayed outside they didn't go back there's gonna be so and, much come out of that and, that's you terrible. Know, and that's what the, the border patrol agent did is you know he was off duty his wife called his wife is a teacher but you know he didn't go after his wife and kid he went he did he did he went grabbed, found his wife his kids no the interview i saw today he didn't oh, he went past okay. her room I thought they said that he went and, and I made think sure he they like were made safe. sure they were okay, but then he kept yeah. going. He, 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 he made sure they were safe, and, and then, then he went and tried and to get as many out as he could. And, and he, I don't know. Went after it's terrible. After the shooter, but it's terrible. I mean, they, and and here's here's what bothers me is as soon as something ha like this happens, you get both sides go to the extreme. Oh yeah, all the politics. Right. One side says you know more gun control, and the other side says no more guns, and then and that's where they go. They, they, and they, nobody gets together and One group anything. goes way to the far right. One group goes way to the left. It's just basically and every then, situation. And then days. they never, they never, they never meet in the meet in the middle to try to actually come up with a resolution. Right. Like, I own a gun. I own. I own a gun. It. I. I took classes. Yeah. I am permitted. I did all those things. I hope I never have to use it. Yeah. Uh, but being a single mom in a house alone, it. You know, I. I did that. I hope I never have to use it. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to have a reason for an automatic weapon. Um, I have no problem with people going through the process that I went through to get a gun. I'm not offended by a waiting period. Yeah. I'm not offended by a background check. I'm not offended by any of those things. I mean, you have to go through more to get your driver's license. Yeah. So I don't understand why we can't put some of those, like, why are people so opposed to some of those controls? Um, and I, and I get it. You know, it doesn't matter what the, what the topic is. Criminals yeah. are going to be criminals. Yeah. Okay? They're, they are. They're going to get drugs. They're going to get guns. They're going to get weapons. They're going to break the law. I and that's it. what the thing is. They say, it, well, but, you know, criminals are always going to get guns. Yeah, but it's not the criminals that are going into the schools and shooting kids. Yeah. These are, these are people who are struggling with something that's that's not I mean it's not like some guy on the run is on you know in a police chase and he goes and barricades right. himself in the school this, this is not what's happening these yeah. are people that are are obviously struggling with mental health issues yeah and the other thing is like there's got to be there's a lot of different ways that we can add you know I hate that my children have to have you know they have mass shooting drills like yeah. I hate that um, I, you know, do I want to have cops in schools? I mean, I don't want to have to need cops in schools, but you know, and I know it costs money and all those yeah. things, but I, I mean, I think there's a lot of different ways well, we can put thing. other things in place, but like my kid's school, like it sounds like this school, like you can just walk no. into it. Like you cannot walk into my, you cannot walk into any door in my kid's school. There's a camera. You have to sign in. There are, you know, multiple things no. that you have to get through. And I don't know any town. That the that the, yeah. the community wouldn't if they had to raise money just to get those simple things yeah. in place. But yeah. But the systems yeah. at the school didn't connect to the the you know like why can't you have you know a button that's hit that you know notifies the you know you have a, you have fire you have the wires there for smoke alarms and fire alarms and all of those things. Run another flipping wire. There are a thousand dads out there or moms that would volunteer to do the labor. And companies that would, you know, I don't know. I just, I think there's more we can do. I don't think, I don't know that we'll ever be able to stop all yeah. of it. But I think this one could have been minimized by a lot. 
but I think it, it needs um, to be it needs to be addressed seriously by both sides from all angles from all angles and not from just from gun you control know, from school security from mental health awareness yeah. and, and 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 care yeah from the community you know reporting from people you know apparently yeah. this kid was putting stuff on Facebook and, and scaring people and it's like I I know that. This is what I like. So it's not quite, it's not the same thing. I get yeah. it. But like when I teach drug free workplace at work training hires, and when we do it every year, I say to somebody, "Don't worry about getting someone in trouble." You know, I mean, number one, if someone is under the influence at work, and I know it's different than, yeah. than being mentally ill, but if someone is acting out of the norm, right? Yes. Whether they're under the influence, and, and most of the time they're not under the influence. Most of the time it's a health emergency. You know, it's a medical emergency. You know, it's it's a stroke or it's it's a you know it's a it's a blood glucose issue, but you know here's the thing like like we're in a position that we need to recognize that if someone is like you're afraid to get them in trouble whatever well you know what you need to be ashamed that you're not offering them your help yeah because whether they're mentally ill or they are you know like if you're so if you're in such a a bad place that you come to work under the influence yeah. of drugs or alcohol, then by God, somebody needs to reach out and, and whether it means that you, you know, you get a rent, a drug test or whatever, you know what? I mean, how bad of a place are you in? That's what, how you're having to get through your day. Like, and, and people need to stop yeah. looking at it like, oh, they're going to get in trouble. Like and people need yeah. to start looking at it like this person is it's in help. such a terrible place. Yeah. That this is how they're coming to work. That this is how they're, you know, they're living their life, you know, constantly in a fog. That that they need somebody to reach out and help them. Yeah. You know, people need to quit looking at it like, um, you know, like we, we did this training at work, and, and I guess the thing that resonated with me, they you know, did you stop looking assume at, positive look at like taboo, intent. Right? Well, quit looking at it like like it's a like it's bad. You know, like if you give me like if you're telling something that I do that bothers you or hinders you from doing something that you need to do at work or whatever, you know, and you're giving me feedback, then yeah. I don't think you're doing it. You know, I always. It's, you know, I always look at the intent of everything. It's like we talk about being sexually harassed and all those things. Like there's, you know, like there's a difference between some goofy old man thinking he's being flirty and somebody who is like threatening me. And you have to look at the intent and that's, and you react to it that way. But you just assume, you know, I'm here, I'm here to help, yeah. you know, and, and, and you want to look out for each other. So I don't know. I just, we need to do more of that. Yeah. Anyway, on think, the other, I think, you know, it's just, everything just, wants to be made political and, and that's when nothing happens right because it, it's gone are the days it, it that we political that we meet in and the then middle. nobody wants to be in the middle everybody wants to be right everybody wants their way that nobody everybody recognizes compromise. that we're not all gonna get everything we want and, that we have to compromise you know and that's and that you're not gonna get it perfect on the first try yeah. and that you're gonna have to you know make changes yeah. so yeah. I don't know maybe it's just as we get and, middle and, aged and, yeah and I mean I don't have the answer I mean but you it's know, awful. It's tragic, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't have happened. I don't think there's there's one person out there that has the answer to it. It just, you know, but it's some, but, take but it's multiple people yeah. to come up with with the with the solution that everybody's not necessarily happy with, but yeah. but is, progress is, is, is progress, yeah. right? Because I, I mean, like I, the whole like stop I mean, saying honestly, stop saying thoughts you know, and prayers I, and, and yeah, start you know yeah, start I mean, let's see progress because it's true. Like let's put some action to it. You know, yeah. even if it do something. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and I'm not going to sit here and say, well, you know, I want people to say, well, oh, oh, you know, he's anti-Second Amendment and this and that. I'm not, guys. I, I mean, I got more guns than I need, right? I hope I mean, we all have more I, than I mean, we ever I need. I have an AR-15. I mean, I have an AK-47. I have shotguns, handguns, I you know. But, again, I'm... I'm a responsible gun owner, right? I'm, yeah. I'm not going to just take my guns and go crazy and shoot people, right? Well, and but you're not immune to, to mental health issues. Yeah, I'm not immune to I mean, health nobody issues, is. Right? Like, they're, they're prevalent in my family, and, you know, it's like, it, you know, no, listen, these things don't discriminate, but, you know, uh, at any time. Uh, you know, and I, but I do believe in some form of... You know, and, and I guess, you know, when people hear the word gun control, it's like, oh, gun control, you're trying to take, away, take my away my guns. No, no, look, I'm just talking about there's got to be a way to be able to figure, not figure out, but say, okay, this person probably shouldn't. 
We don't let felons have, I don't know. Own a gun, right? I don't know. Uh, and, I mean, how you do that, I don't know. Because people say, well, you know, he was able to buy a gun and he still passed, you know, well, all this and, other I mean, stuff, right? I mean, people are going to get guns, so we have we have to we have to battle it from a lot of different sides. Yeah. So I don't know. I, what, I don't know what the answer is, it's guys. Tragic. But I, mean, I know the answer. Mm -hmm. The answer is it's not nothing. It's not nothing, and not continuing the same down the same path, right? Because you know, it's not er, nobody wants to do anything until it's their kids that are in that situation, and it's their kids that end up on the wrong side None of, of that gun, right? None of our kids are immune right? to this. Well, and so, it's not just kids anymore. I mean, yeah. it's people showing up at concerts, and it's people showing up at, you know, it's... it's At the, the, the grocery stores, yeah. right? Well, so you had that at the grocery store, too. So, I don't know, guys. I'm not... I'm, it's I'm awful. Not, I'm not... On a lighter, let's answers, talk about something lighter. So, on, a, on lighter, I mean, I don't know, so... Uh, the, I don't the, know. What else do you have? Oh, you Johnny know what I Depp did? Johnny Amber Heard verdict came down. Yeah, again. it did? Yeah. It did? So what was the... the, the so the, essentially they, they found an agreement with Johnny Depp on all his complaints. And they so they awarded him $15 million. And then she had two counter yeah. points. And I think they found for her on one and not on the other. And he she has to pay him $2 million. So essentially she has to pay him $13 million. $13 million? That's and he was going for fifty, wasn't he? Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, no. like I live streamed the verdict. <laughs> yeah, so like I haven't followed so here's the more thing, than just right? like so, I haven't followed more than like just headlines. Yeah, but so it, I, I did you know, live I'm watch the verdict that you know um, Johnny Depp, you know, was um, that he won that that he, not that he won, but that that. You know, he was uh, uh, not the word is not victimized. Vindicated. Vindicated, right? Yeah. But would you but do but, but but see, yeah, I don't know. I'd be saying stupid words. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't live in a you wouldn't live in a world where you're corrected all the yeah, time. Yeah, where I'm I don't have my autocorrect. <laughs> so so it, she's my actual human autocorrect, right? Of all things, autocorrect is <laughs> one of them. Terrible for <laughs> But here, here's so so that that's that's good that it happened and it kind of sheds light on, you know, that men are also can be victims of domestic violence. The only thing that I that that in the back of my head that I worry about is, you know, if if, if another woman that's truly yeah. abused, yeah. Are, so, are people going to start saying, "Ah, oh, she's just." pulling an amber heard right so so here's here's my take on it okay two sides of this yes men can be i i think there's two sides to this one there is that side like this is a lose-lose it doesn't really yeah. matter yeah. this is a lose-lose yeah here's what i think happened i think they're both awful together they're both terrible in their relationship and they were terrible to each other i think she got a little too petty betty right and she did all the things that you know, women, when we get bitter and petty, that we do, like, we all want to put out a social media yeah. rant. We all want to, like, you know, go, well, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, you know, he did this, and, you know, we want to do that. And the thing is, she had a bigger audience for it, and it was a good time in her career to, you know, and, and she took, she used all of that to her advantage. Yeah. I'm not going to say that, that they didn't fight and argue, and they probably didn't both beat yeah. the crap out of each other, right? I, I, I think that probably happened. But do I think that what she did was take her pettiness, you know, like, here's the thing. Like, you know, I say all, all, all of us women have, everybody has it in them. Even, yeah. even men do. But, yeah. you know, we all want to, like, we feel wronged and we feel jilted. And we want to, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times my ex-husband has put something on Facebook that has pissed me off. Or that I want to make some slide comment or put out, you know, like, I see some, you know, drunken or, or you know, or terrible father, yeah. you know, meme. Um, you know, and, and it's my bitterness and my pettiness and whether the meme is true or not. I'm like, oh, I want to put that out there, you know, because, you know, and all people will understand. And I don't do it because it's a bad look. And it only hurts me or if my kids were to see it or whatever. It's, it's yeah. a bad look, ladies. Yeah. So keep your stuff private. And I think she had this big, huge audience for it. Um, I think she should have quietly walked away. From, I think they both should have quietly walked away from the relationship. I think that if she was going to... I think there were other ways to use her platform yeah. against domestic violence. Yeah. Um, that's what I think. 
So I think I, on the other side of that, on the Johnny Depp side of that, um, you know, I am a mother of two white, soon to be men. And we are in a society now that, you know, we don't exactly, it's, you know, like here he is years later, he's lost millions of dollars in opportunity. He's been blacklisted. Yeah. Um, and that's all over and done with. And he's not going to get any of that back because of what she said, that he had to go and spend millions of dollars in court just to prove that, you know, listen, you're not getting both sides of the story, you know. And he said some terrible things and text messages and things like that, you know. And, and he did. Um, but, you know, all it takes is like some, it, it takes a, a petty Betty which is also why it's terrible for petty women. Betty. That's a good one. Is, it, that, is that like bitter Betty? But bitter petty? Betty, but petty Betty. So is there a petty bitter Betty? I mean, is that bitter, the worst listen, of the worst? I think petty, petty? I think all I think all petty Bettys are bitter. So, okay. but you know, so but but it takes you know just some petty unhappy woman that didn't get her way or girl that doesn't think about the consequences. You know, that wants to throw something out there on Snapchat or Facebook or whatever. And it will take that man down, and it doesn't matter if six months later or two weeks later you say that didn't happen. Yeah, I was just angry. Damage was done. You know, so you know, kind of like we talk about, we got to find somewhere where women, anyone who is abused, yeah. has a safe space to go. But that, as a society, we go back to you know, innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Um. You know, a safe space for, for abused people to go and get help and, and start that process. But also a, a, a due process for the folks that, you know, because, I mean, this could happen to any, you know, and, 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 you know, people say, oh, don't, you know, my children, you know, I, I hope that I am raising them to be good, responsible men. We have conversations yeah. like this, you know, you know, we hear black mothers talk about like they have to have really tough conversations about law enforcement with their kids, yeah. which is terrible and sad. Yeah. And, and, and they have to have conversations with their boys about yeah. how they behave around women. And, you know, I, I, I don't think that my children would treat anyone that way, but that doesn't mean that like, if they don't like some girl that likes them, that they can't still be in the yeah. same situation, yeah. you know? But, you know, and, and so that's the thing. I mean, just, kids, kids are their awful. own, right? Well, can, and they have no perspective. They have only, no... You can teach them. You can... Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're their own people, and you never know what's in their brain, and, you know, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, and the thing is, like, when they're young so and yeah. dumb, and, and, you know, they, they just think, you know, big deal. Nobody's going to care the consequences, that, I, right? that I put that out there, you know, and it's like, it matters. Yeah. But you, and we didn't grow up with that kind of pressure or, or you know, the internet, thank God. Yeah. You know, we got, we were, you know, if I was a petty Betty, I just called and hung up on you, you know. Yeah. yeah. I would crank call you or I would, you know. Uh, in my days, it was Morse code. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like, the, and I didn't follow the verdict Or those string much. phones. Um, Did you ever do those string phones? Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. But, and, and it goes to, you know, and the, and the other thing is, like, here's the thing. Like, this isn't, like, I don't know if what Amber Heard did broke any laws or anything like that, which wasn't what was determined. Yeah. You know, but, but people have already, you know, like, there's memes out there, and they put all that out there, and it's like, you know, guys, get the whole story. You know, I don't have the whole story. I got the, you know, I followed what I could, you know, just quick headlines and yeah. things, but, you know, I don't know. It's yeah. just... I worry about that. Yeah. But I'm not going to say I, I I think the verdict was correct. I don't think anybody needs 50 or 100 million dollars yeah. for it, but yeah. and they and and he's probably paid more in legal fees and everything else for this than he's going to see from her. Yeah. Yeah, that's true because just because it went your way doesn't mean you didn't get the money, right? So well, so, you know, they'll tie it up in other things. Tie it up or in another, another but, I mean, but hearing it's, or it's a lose lose. You know, yeah, women who are abused, it's a it's a shot against, you know, now people won't believe you again and, 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 and if you have been abused or you have been assaulted, there is a bit of shame with that because you think, What did I do? What what made you know, it's just like with anything, you know you know, what did I do? How did I how did I get here? I'm smarter than this, you know, they're gonna what did I do to put myself in that situation mm -hmm. and, and, and you can't rationalize with yourself that yeah. You didn't do anything wrong, you know, that this person, you know, it was this person, um, yeah. because, 
of stories like this in Amber Heard, it's like, well, they're not going to believe me, or, you know, this is an upstanding citizen. It's, you know, that no one's going to believe that this guy would do that. He's married, you know, he's got, you know, he's married and he's successful and he wouldn't do anything like that. And, you know, and at the same time, you know, like men aren't going to say, well, my wife beats me at home. So I don't know. It's a lose, which, lose, but, which, you know, but reminds if she's shit in his bed, yeah, she's shit in his bed <laughs> or if she didn't, that is never going away. It's never going away. Never going away. But, which reminds me, you know, and, and I had a conversation with this, I think yesterday with somebody, I don't know how it came up. Right, so so I don't know if there's 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 a video going around in you know Facebook and TikTok and other places about. Uh, uh, so I don't know if you heard in the news or, or articles that the uh, uh, Southern Baptist Church is in deep trouble right now, just like the Catholic Church, because they had been hiding a lot of uh, sexual abuse. I had not heard that, that was being from pastors yeah. right and it's a southern southern baptist church right which is the biggest church here in, in the south big church in the south yeah yeah so they're going to through that and then you know obviously their answer was like well we're going to put in uh we're going to put together a, an internal team to investigate it was it we know where that investigation is going <laughs> to go right so um probably made up of the same people who kept it quiet yeah so anyways there's this video going around and it's a, a, a lady now. Now she, she's a woman now, and she's got her husband, and she confronts her pastor. Oh yeah, they Have started grooming her, and she was sixteen. Yeah, when she yeah. was sixteen, and he was raping her, and this and that. And like and he went in front of his church and was like, "Oh, I cheated on my wife." Like he yeah. was trying. Yeah, and I oh, hurt that them, and and, and, mm. and 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 I asked for forgiveness. And people start yelling, "We love you, pastor!" And and and, and it's because sad he didn't because, tell him that she was sixteen when it happened. Yeah. He told him like that he cheated on his wife. No, like, but that it was gonna, recent. Well, no, she confronted up front and she told him. Remember after when I was, he no. said, "Yeah, no, uh, after after, after they, they like started cheering for him, she came out and said, Listen, I was sixteen. I was a yeah. kid when this happened.' Yeah, and then they were like, "Whoa, hold no, back. no, no, no!" Oh, she, the article she, I no, read, she did all that. And then that's not what I read. And then uh, everybody it says I hurt them and, and and this and that and forgive me, and 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 the girl's crying right there with next to her husband up on stage still. And then people start yelling, "We love you, Pastor. We forgive you." And then everybody just goes up, gets up from their seats, goes up, and they start hugging the pastor. See, the story that I and, read and the ladies is different. Is there crying? You know, because it's like, wait a minute, I'm the victim here, and. and well, but the, the story that I read, and I wish I could find it, um, I read that he went, like, he went in front of his church and said, I cheated on my wife, I stepped outside, I, you know, I lied to everybody, and they were like, you know, and he was really emotional about it and regretful about it, and that they, you know, they were like, you know, we love you, we'll, you know, we'll get through this, and then they found out that... It started when she was a child. No, she, it happened. She was yeah, up on stage I, that's and not, she, that's she confronted him. She, after he said all that, though. Well, I don't know church. if it was but after or whatever. Then, but, she, but that's not. And the way I read it was that was when the the congregation started breaking up. They were like, whoa, 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 what happened? So I read I that know, differently. But, but that, 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 that. I wish just, I could find I just, that because I, I read just, that. I just remembered that right now. What yeah. you're talking about because. But it's all I in the mean, presentation, you know. He thought he could come ahead of it. That's just. I wish I could find that because I read that article. Because and, she and, talked and, about and like that's being the thing. groomed, I mean, that's, and that's one thing. That's one of the reasons why I, you know, I, I, I never went back to the Catholic Church or, or any church for that matter, because of things that you know they do and they 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 hide and you know and things like well, that. But I don't but, think that's true for all churches. Well, I mean, you'd be surprised, right? Um, I mean, and I don't think it's just church organizations. I mean, it happens in schools. It happens yeah, in, yeah, you know, but, it happens in all sorts but, of communities. You know, but it doesn't happen everywhere. You know, yeah. it's it's kind of like... Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of like, man, I wish I could find that because now I want to know. Um, but I think it's kind of like that's the story that comes out. Like, there are good there are good groups and communities out there. there oh, are, yeah. And there are yeah. bad people out yeah. there as well. So, you know, it's like Mr. Rogers says, look for the helpers. Um, Mr. Who? Mr. Rogers. From Mr. Rogers' neighborhood? Yeah, he always said, oh. look for the helpers. Um, but, you know, I think that we don't, you know, you don't hear about the good things. You know, you watch the news and they're not like, hey, here's our sunshine story for the day. Here's people who are helping. We hear about school shootings and we hear about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. And we hear about, 
you know, we hear about the extreme stories. Yeah, yeah, we don't experience. hear about, you know, no one's going to talk about this quiet right. church community that, you know, that helps, you know, that helps out and doesn't have any drama yeah. because nobody, you know, because they don't think anybody wants nobody, to hear that. Yeah, so, wants good news. I mean, I don't think it's fair to the, say every, you know, news. but I, you know, I mean, it, it's everywhere and it's, yeah. but so. it's also not everywhere. If that yeah, makes sense. but uh, anyways, oh yeah, and I, and I read that other article too where, uh, God, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, but anyway, I can't remember his name. But he's like, water, he's like the CEO of IKEA. Okay, I don't know, I don't know what I'm his name. Sure is. Some Swedish story. name. I can't remember some Swedish name. But it, apparently, the guy was, you know, was running for uh, prime minister in Sweden. Is that where I don't the know. company yeah. comes from? Sweden? Maybe. Yeah. So, anyways, anyways, I guess I need to this the, the, the 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 CEO of IKEA is now is now uh, was elected the prime minister of Sweden. Yeah. And he's in the process of assembling his cabinet. <laughs> uh, Damn it! I'm googling it too. <laughs> but yes, IKEA is Sweden. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, I've heard that story. Damn it! And you know my the whole time I'm sitting here, I'm like, when's he doing it? Doing it. So there you go. Man. So there you go. Yeah. I'm getting better. I'm getting better, right? I still. What was the last one about the um, wedding cake? God, the that was a good one. one. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. So. Wedding cake. Yeah, that, you that, eating that, it 20 years later. You still. You still I kept thinking, thinking you were gonna later. like go into like you know because somebody so the doctor at our clinic at work we were talking I was talking to her. And we were talking. We were talking about drugs because, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, sometimes her and I's conversations are about drug yeah. use amongst my employees. Yeah. And um, we were talking about acid, and she's like, "Man, what? A-, you know, because we, you know, like my, you know, kids. We, but we have kids the same yeah. age, and you know, we're talking about, you know, I just, I just talked to them about, man, if you're gonna do it, be in a safe space. Don't do it. There, you know, you guys got to be, you know, consequences, and you know. And uh, she's like, "Well, tell them, you know, acid. Like, apparently, if you drop acid." Like, it stays in your system forever, and, like, 30, 40 years later, it can, like, pop back up and, like, totally change your brain chemistry or something and wig you out. And I was like... Really? Apparently, that's troubling. <laughs> I, I was know. like, wow. I've never tripped on acid. Have you tripped on acid? <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> I mean, I've never... Like, I don't think it was called acid at the time. <laughs> What's it called? It Mo- was a. It Molly? was a. Uh, no, I was in college. Heroin. I was in college. It was a micro dot, I think. Anyway, it was like dot? one time, and legit, I laughed for like. So my friend, a friend of mine, was it psychedelic I, and stuff and flying no, monkeys it was just, and dancing cows. It was and, just I was wide awake. I had all sorts of energy, and everything was funny. Now flip that, and my friend, who will never be named, uh, was wide awake full of energy and flipping out over everything like paranoid about everything um so like and I knew that because like it was like 12 hours of laughing like I hurt the next day I couldn't sleep I was like I'm never doing that again because I knew that it was trouble but <laughs> shit I might wake up 10 years from now my brain things, might flip and I might be like the next damn joker God, you got me beat on that one girl because I, I never tripped on acid I can't you know what <sighs> Kids you've, 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 got me, you've got me beat. There, there, I can't. I, I, I would never be able to beat that. That was. It was a stupid, poor choice on my part. And now, thirty years later, it's like, wow. How long does LSD stay in your system? See, that doesn't stay. I think she was just messing with you to see if you. She might have. I hope so there. because it was kind of like shit. And you were like, oh shit. And she's like, oh. That's like I was having another conversation with a friend of mine uh, at eighth grade graduation, which I swore I wasn't going to cry at. And of course I did. Um, and like her son has a boyfriend now. And she's like, man, I just, we don't let him be alone anywhere. And I was like, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it, you know, because that's what, yeah. that's what we all did. Yeah. And I said, she was talking about it. And she, I was like, listen, we, you know, we have talks about this all the time. We, I, we talk about it. You know, we have code words. We have all the things. And I said, I said to her, I said, you know, I would much rather my son come home and say, mom, I'm in trouble. I'm going to be a dad versus like, I find out he has like a heroin problem or a meth problem yeah. because 
I can, you know, I, you know, babies, babies are a blessing. Their timing is not always great, but that would be a lot easier for us to manage, manage and handle yeah. than this lifelong yeah. addiction that they yeah. have to fight. Because you know, now it's like you, you know, take one hit and you're yeah. hooked forever. Yeah. And she was like, "Well, I never thought about it that way." I was like, "I mean, I don't want to be a grandma at 45, but." Yeah. But that I can help. I'm much more capable of helping with, and, mm. and will get a little easier over time. So they say, <laughs> 17 years later. Yeah. So, but. so I, I've never done acid. The worst thing I did, maybe I shouldn't say that, but the worst thing I've done was I smoked uh, a blunt that had been soaked in embalming fluid. What does that do? It's a pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I smoked. I smoked marijuana twice. Uh, first time I was like, I don't understand why people do this. Second time I was at my brother's house and his roommate. So there was a second time. Last time you said it was only once. No. <laughs> I've always been honest about the story. I haven't told my kids a story. You said I smoked the weed once with my brother. So obviously you smoked weed once. I did smoke your weed brother. once with my brother. <laughs> Anyway, but I remember his roommate had like horns and stuff, and I was like, "This is not how this is supposed to work." Yeah. So I wonder if they dipped probably. it. Probably. I don't know. It was laced they with something. They probably dipped it. But and I, I'm sure maybe they laced it with LSD because that's what I don't know. Things. They would lace them with LSD. But, but Mr. Dylan had horns, and he was yeah. red like the devil. And I was like, "This is not how this is supposed to work." Yeah, that's not how it's supposed to work. And after both times that I smoked it, I got like this, like the corner of my eye. You yeah. know how like you get the that twitch, muscle spasm? Yeah. And my God, it lasted for hours, for days. Yeah. And I remember. Like I used to, I used to talk to my mother on the phone every day for an hour, every day. Sometimes we talked three or four times a day about nothing. And my mom was an optician. And I remember I was like, God, geez, you know? And she's like, what? And I was like, I've had this muscle, I've had this twitch in my eye for like three days. And she said, did you smoke bad weed? Yeah, he was and I was, your like, <laughs> I was like, what? No, Wait, what? No, I would never. Did you get in your brother's weed? So I never touched it again because I was like, well, I know I have a tail if I smoke weed because my eyes going to, you gonna start twitching. No, yeah. If you, if like you smoked weed and you were seeing the devil, yeah, that was probably laced with LSD. It was laced in something. Yes, that was, that was another thing. And you know, thing it was like, that should have been a safe space for me. My, yeah. It's my, bre my, you know, but yeah. you know. I'm not sure today he would do it any differently, but you know, he was not looking out for me. It was not like, don't mess with my sister. Yeah, it was like, scare the shit out of her, make her think you're the devil. It was, I don't care. <laughs> my goodness, that was interesting. So, anyway. Anyways, guys. Um, I don't know what you're going to call this one. We're, this we're is gonna, terrible. We're going to call this one uh, The Runaway Bride. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a very good story. Uh,. It felt much more dramatic when it yeah. was happening. Well, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. I just felt terrible. I really felt terrible about it. I was like, man, I'm an awful person. Yeah. Man, you weren't ready. What can you say, right? If you're not ready, you're not ready. It wasn't ready. a good match. We did not yeah. want the same. You know, in college, like, it's, like, so easy to, yeah. like, you're in the same yeah, schedule half routine. The time. And, and we, we really weren't. Not my, not our senior year. You drunk half the time or you've been smoking Your senior year, laced you kinda, weed. Your senior year, you kind of settle a little bit. Yeah. You kind of get more serious about things. And yeah. then, like, you still party, but it's more like just two nights a week instead yeah. of seven. But, yeah. um, you know, it was like one of those things like we got out of college. We went from like, I didn't really didn't party in college to partying seven days a week. I mean, <laughs> a lot of kids party, you know, seven days a week. Uh, I did But, it. like, we didn't. I thought I was bad. Um, Jeez, Louise, man, you're like... So, but, you know, it was just a case of, <laughs> like, you get out of college and you're like, well, we didn't really talk about what real life was going to look like and we yeah. just didn't want the same things. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't listen to this, or, but I yeah. think he would agree. Well, I don't know, man. This boring Christy here. I don't know about that. I am boring. Man, I don't know. Apparently you were. So Maybe. there was like a three-year time span <laughs> that I was more interesting. <laughs> I'm not You're sure that was interesting right now. I'm not sure that was interesting yeah. or foolish. Yeah, so. But I'm not yeah. very interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> If you say so. Listen, for once, you're trying to get off and I am keep talking. It's well, time to say goodbye, Raul. Goodbye, Raul. Goodbye, Raul. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. We'll uh, talk to you at la later sometime, right? Who knows when? A few weeks from now because, <laughs> you know, we got you know, this vacay over here. Back to back vacations. Not back to back, but close. Close. Yeah. Right. So there might be a small break in between where she might make some time for her 
Besty to record. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, you know, next time we meet, we might have some interesting uh, stories about the pink. The pink pony. The pink <laughs> pony or whatever. That's next to Best me. seafood restaurant town. Yeah, best seafood. Oh, I could go somewhere with that. <laughs> <laughs>